you are a skeptic in matters of astrology, you will probably ask for concrete proof that astrological predictions have actually been made. These old books are the proof of such predictions. In the first place, we have dear old Mother Shipton. She was not very handsome, but one of the greatest seeresses of all times. Living in 1450 AD, she actually predicted the discovery of America, the discovery of gold in California, the invention of airplanes and submarines, the inventions of automobiles. She even went so far as to say that the time would come in the distant future when women would cut their hair and wear trousers. In this chart, the first sign of the zodiac is Aries, extending from March 20th to April 20th. Those born under this sign are strong, courageous, optimistic people with positive pioneering spirits and fitted for leadership. The second sign of the zodiac, Taurus, rules from April 20th to May 20th and bestows upon those born under it a courageous but rather stubborn disposition, but also a great love for the fine arts, culture, and the beautiful things of life. The third sign of the zodiac, Gemini, rules those born between the 20th of May and the 20th of June. It bestows a dual nature with love of change and travel and some tendency to nervousness. Those born under the sign of Cancer the Crab, ruling from June 20th to July 20th, are born with strong family attachments, considerable vanity, and a sensitive high-strung temperament. It is interesting to note that the United States of America came into existence under the sign of Cancer the Crab. Now the fifth sign of the zodiac, Leo, ruling from July 20th to August 20th, is the most loyal and conscientious of the zodiacal signs. It bestows upon those born under it love of leadership, loyalty to friends, high personal principles, and success in those departments of life in which they have authority over others. The sixth sign of the zodiac, Virgo, rules those who are born between the 20th of August and the 20th of September. These people stand in their own way, and if they overcome a tendency to an inferiority complex, can go far in this world. Those born between the 20th of September and the 20th of October are born under the sign of Libra. This is an emotional, artistic sign, a little given to extravagance and somewhat egotistic. These people must develop a practical, everyday, working philosophy of life. The eighth sign of the zodiac, Scorpio, rules those people who were born between the 20th of October and the 20th of November. They are a hard-working, conscientious group of people but they are often misunderstood because they lack diplomacy. The ninth sign of the zodiac, Sagittarius, rules those people who are born between the 20th of November and the 20th of December. This is an optimistic sign, bestowing a genial disposition, a tendency to extravagance and overindulgence, but a general optimism on all the problems of life. The 10th sign of the zodiac, Capricorn, governs those who are born between December 20th and January 20th. This sign bestows a grave and taciturn disposition with a considerable tendency towards self-pity. And in order to be happy, the Capricorn person must cultivate a genuine friendliness of nature. The eleventh sign of the zodiac is Aquarius, governing those people who are born between the 20th of January and the 20th of February. People born under it are rather inconsistent in their ideas, but they contribute definitely to progress. They are humanitarian, progressive, generous and sympathetic in their natures and lives. Now the twelfth sign of the zodiac, Pisces, governs from the 20th of February to the 20th of March. Those who are born under it do most of their thinking sitting down because their feet hurt. But in the end, much of the world's greatest progress is accomplished by Piscean people who are mystic, creative, and idealistic in their natures. The story that follows is an example of one of the practical applications of astrology. A crime has been committed. Astrology can solve crime. It has solved many crimes in the past. Astrology is the strangest of the sciences, but it is a science.
I missed it by 50. I thought we'd do 490 for the weather we've been having. We'll be in San Francisco tomorrow night. What? I think it's there, too. What number is this? How many miles? It's 470. 472? Biggest bull we have. I've sure got to go thank that Miss Minkins. Why, well, I thank her. I bought your ticket for you, didn't I? Oh, so that's it. You think I should split the pool with you? Well, if that's not a laugh. I only meant you ought to buy a round of drinks for the losers. You've got some right there. How about a drink? Sorry, I was just a little slow on the uptake. Well, port your helms and follow me. Oh. Make one at Tom Collins, will you? So you're the lucky one, are you? Bet I was. Champagne popsy. Yeah, scotch and soda, sir. <laughs> Oh, here comes your girlfriend. Oh, Miss Mink, I'm going to go thank her. How about your drink? I won't forget. I'm going to call Charlie, huh? Venus, would you like a little wafer? Hmm? I'm going to call it down toilet, huh? Oh, you sit right there. Miss Mink, it all happened just as you said. I won the pool. So that was the good luck I saw for you. Yes, but how did you know I was going to win? Are you a fortune teller? No, of course not. But you asked me about your passport visas once. I noticed the date of your birth. Oh, you're an astrologer. Yes, I've been interested in it all my life. Well, that's wonderful. Can you tell me anything more about myself? No, no, I don't. Do you happen to know the hour of your birth? No, just the day. So few people know the exact moment of their birth. Without that, we can only generalize. Your cancer. Huh? That means all people born between June 20th and July 20th come under the sign of Cancer, oh. which means the sun is in that sign of the zodiac. You certainly like pretty clothes, don't you? How do you know that? You go for vivid colors and rather startling patterns. And you're a bit vain. Well, I have my moments. You're moody and changeable. You see, the sign of Cancer is ruled by the moon, and the moon has two phases, and so have you. That's right. I am changeable. Sometimes I don't even know my own mind. At times, you're grasping. And then you turn right around and give away everything you have. But at heart, you'd really like a home. Yes, and I'm going to have one, too. The one thing against a home in your chart is your own weakness. What's the matter with me? You're too fond of certain things. Oh, everybody has a drink now and then. Only drink? What do you mean? Oh, she's just asking questions. I don't like curious people. I was trying to tell Miss Kenton's horoscope. I thought I might help her. Well, she doesn't need your help. Are you sure of that? Well, I've made regular trips to the Orient for the past 20 years. I've met astrologers and fakirs and yogis. There are many frauds, of course. Ah, I see you follow me, Miss Ming. Would you care to have me read your horoscope? Go ahead, Phil. Maybe she can tell you something. Unless, of course, Mr. Corey's afraid of the truth. That's a nasty one. Very well, let's see how clever you really are, Miss Ming. All right. When were you born? Here's my passport. Maybe you can get enough information from there. Good. Are you Oh, another thing, Miss Kenton. You should marry someone born in December, a Sagittarian. What's Mr. Corey? He's a Libra, October. Let's you out, Nita. Whom should I marry, if at all? Someone born in March or April, Pisces or Aries. I have to take over my form sheets, but I think I know just the girl. I was hoping you didn't, for the girl's sake. Suppose you tell me just exactly what you mean, Miss Ming. As a library, you have strong artistic interests. I don't suppose the fact that my passport lists my occupation as Oriental importer could have suggested that to you? You're inclined to nag and find fault. What a pity your appreciation of beauty is directed entirely towards the sensual. I'm afraid your character analysis is merely intended to be insulting. Oh, nothing personal, I assure you. You've inherited great wealth. Anybody who's ever lived in San Francisco knows that. But you've not used the money to good advantage. No, I know you're faking. Hey, come over here and listen to my fortune. Miss Ming, for your information, Corey Incorporators is listed double A, and I built up that company myself. You've used your wealth to hurt many people. That's modern business. I don't mean only in business, Mr. Corey. There was a girl. No, really? Yes. She's dead now. That's what I mean when I say you've misused the money left in your care. Well, I never knew that. No one else did either. Well, I've had enough of this bunk. I'm going to misuse some more money and buy a drink. That's what money's for, Miss Ming, to be spent. And I'm going to spend mine just as I please, always. Always is a rather unfortunate word, Mr. Corey. Well, maybe, but I've got a lot of good years ahead, at least. You have only a few good days ahead at most. What do you mean by that? 
I'm simply telling Mr. Corey what I see in his horoscope. Astrologers don't like to predict a thing of this sort, but in this case it might be averted if he... How? I don't think Mr. Corey is interested. You're right. It's the old army game. I pay her a fee to save me from something that never would have happened anyhow. Then I can only advise you to put your house in order. 48 hours is all the time the stars allow. Well, maybe I can go to Hollywood and find some more considerate stars. Let's see what the bartender thinks about it. Uh, Shields, what do you want? Why, sir, I... What's the matter? Well, sir, I, I just heard... Oh, but give me that. Any answer, sir? Trying to make me believe you haven't read it? Of course not, sir. Very well, wireless my esteemed partner to keep his needs to himself. We'll talk it over after we dock tomorrow. Uh, beg pardon, miss, I, I couldn't help hearing. I'm Shields, Mr. Curry's man. You're worried about what I told you? I am, miss. There was such a lot of truth in what you said. I, I was wondering if you couldn't tell me a few things. You see, Miss, life is so hard. Now you're telling me. When was your birthday? September the 10th, 1890, at Liverpool. 1890, September the 10th. You're Virgo, and your Neptune is square Saturn, and Mars squares the Sun. What was the hour? I'm sorry, Miss. I, I'm afraid I can't quite remember. Too bad. A rather interesting setup, but without the exact time. I might get it for you later. I hope you can. Virgos usually are so precise that you worry the rest of your life unless you do find out exactly. I write for my birth certificate tonight. Thank, uh, thank you so much. Uh, where could I uh, find you at San Francisco? Isn't Fred Gow in business with Mr. Corey? Yes, miss. Then ask him. Thank you, miss. <laughs> there goes your bad news. Uh, I wish she'd never come in. <laughs> she told you plenty. Nothing I meant a thing. Then you don't think you're gonna die soon? What do you think? Well, if you're gonna pass out in any minute, we better ask the captain to marry us now. Don't start that stuff. No, Anita, you've been a pretty good scout, and we've had a lot of fun the last few years. So what? Oh, let's have another drink. Listen, Phil, you can't laugh it off like that. I've kept my eyes open a lot more than you think. Enough to make sure that you're gonna come through. Plenty. my honored partner. It warms my heart to see you again. You wanted the docs to meet me? That is because you suggest in your wireless I restrain my impatience. Uh-huh. Well, keep on restraining. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, the windows look very nice. Thank you, sir. And uh, you were quite right in refusing to give Mr. Gower the combination of my set. Those were your orders, sir. Anything important turned up? The mail is on your desk in your study. Mm -hmm. And on Miss Kane phone. Oh, that is important. About those letters, sir. Listen, Gower, I just got in. I don't want to be bothered with business tonight. But you don't understand. Yes, I do. We can talk about it tomorrow. for lunch tomorrow at the Palace Hotel. You forget, Mr. Corey, you're going out of town. I know where I'm going. You tell her what I said. Very well. Good to be 
be back again, eh, Shields? It is indeed, sir. Shall I lay out your evening clothes, sir, or are you staying in? In. Will there be anything else, sir? Make yourself scarce. Go to a movie. Did you say to a movie, sir? You'll watch the cable cars if you like, so long as you go. Very good, sir. Hello. Mr. Corley speaking. Um... Ask Miss Kane if she's picked me, please. That's the sort of breaks I've been getting for a month. It looked like a fat story and turns into a suicide. Well, it saves this department a lot of work. And that's something for me to be thankful for. Yeah, you fellas are sure overworked. But if it turns back into a murder story, I'll let you know. You'll let me know. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Right. Why don't you watch where you're going, you dumb news hound? Why, I thought you'd know where I was going, Sergeant. You're a detective. Uh, is the chief in? You might be able to find him in his office, Sergeant. I'll find him all right, and you can sit on this egg while I'm doing it. Sit down, Mug. District Attorney sent these gentlemen over to see Inspector Gregg. Go right in. He's expecting you. Thank you. <coughs> Inspector, this is Mr. Gao. He was associated in business with Mr. Corey. Mr. Fields, Philip Corey's attorney. According to Mr. Corey's will, I am his sole executor. So when Mr. Gao came to me this morning and told me the terrible news and how anxious he was to get the letters, I... Oh, just a minute, please. To what letters do you refer? Ah, uh, Inspector, if you will permit, I will explain. Of course, sit down. You see, I've been assisting Mr. Corey in assembling an extremely valuable collection of antique Chinese art objects, which for the most part is still in my possession. Naturally, I realized an accounting would have to be made to the estate. And when I found my file of copies of the inventory incomplete, and that Mr. Corey was dead... He came I... to me for authority to see the original. Well, where are those letters? Mr. Corey's safe in his apartment, oh. I suppose. Well, if you gentlemen will call back later, I'll be very happy to tell you just what can be done. Of course, at present, in view of the unfortunate situation... Ah, yes, indeed, most unfortunate. But knowing Philip as I did, I cannot imagine him taking his own life. Well, then, I can tell you quite frankly that you're right. Philip Corey didn't kill himself. He was murdered. I can't believe it. Who did it? Well, we don't know as yet. We didn't know he was murdered until just a few minutes ago. But someone knew he was going to be killed. She, she said so. Who said so? When? Where? It's in the paper. A woman on the ship predicted Philip's death openly before a large group of passengers. Passengers on the Star of China, which docked last evening, recalled a prediction made only two days ago by Miss May Li Ming, a Chinese girl, who said she based her predictions on astrological calculations. Uh, I don't believe in crystal gazing or any of that junk. The sergeant is right, of course. It doesn't solve the mystery of Philip's death, does it? No, that still remains for the department to do, as well as get those letters for you. For that, we will be most grateful. Come, Mr. Fields. I shall drop back later, Inspector, and thank you again for your trouble. <coughs> Who was the man sitting over there when we came in? Jug Libero, they're trying to pin a bank job on him. Thank you so much. He has a most interesting face. Those guys are on the job early. Them letters must be important. So is this. But as good a lead as we could get. Oh, now, don't you get that way, Chief. Folks would go for that stuff are halfway to the monkey house already. Yeah? Well, you're gonna go and see her just the same. Me? And you're gonna bring her right in here to me. Well, won't that be a honey for the news hounds? Inspector Greg asked the stars for help. This astrologer is a Chinese girl. That's what it said in the paper. And Philip Corey dealt in Chinese art, didn't he? Oh, now I'm getting you. Yes, Sergeant. Go get her. You may leave me. You hear that part one? No, but she has at the police station. There's nobody home. You can't come inside. Uh... Come in, Sergeant. 
I rather expected a visit from the authorities in connection with Mr. Corey's death. Yeah, we figured you'd know something about it from the hint she gave him. That wasn't a hint, Sergeant. That was strictly an astrological prediction. My own horoscope told me to expect a visitor, followed by a short journey. You're the visitor, and the trip to the police station must be the journey. I see. And you mean you could figure that all out from that book? Yes, that's a Chinese chart, a map of the heavens, predicting events just like the horoscope that predicted Mr. Corey's death. You mean you won't admit that you had a tip that Corey was going to get knocked off? I know nothing about it except what I saw in Mr. Corey's chart. You couldn't get a tip like that about me from a map. What day in March were you born, Sergeant? The second. How'd you know I was born in March? From your feet, for one thing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's keep this in English. Thank you. I'll be home for dinner at 5 o'clock. You will if the inspector says so. He might want to hold you in jail. No, my horoscope says otherwise. Oh, yeah? Have you your car here? Yeah. What do you call that thing? I call her Venus. She's not so beautiful to look at, but she certainly has a much sweeter disposition than a lot of people I know. <laughs> Maybe she was born in March. No, she's been having very little trouble lately. If you mean I have, you're right. Saturn has been passing through Pisces, your sun sign. You can't guess what it did. Those Pisces seem to have a chronic case of spring fever and always try to get by with the least amount of physical exertion. That's where you're wrong. If you think I'm lazy, you can look at my record. I've cracked five big cases in two months. Well, a lot of mystics are born in March. Maybe you're psychic. Yeah, maybe I am. You still insist you don't know anything about the killing? I know nothing about it except what I saw in Mr. Corey's chart. But you didn't see how he was going to die. I didn't have the hour of his birth, only the day. And yet I understand that you told him plenty aboard that boat, enough to prove there was bad blood between you at any rate. I merely warned him for his own good. Yeah, maybe you were just trying to scare him, but what we want to know is where you were last night. I was home all evening. I have witnesses to prove it. We won't bother about that now. I don't see why I should be treated like a criminal. Because I read a man's horoscope? I don't believe a horoscope, whatever you call it, could enable you to predict anything about anyone, even if you knew the exact second of their birth. I'm sorry to differ, Inspector, but I can. Every sign in a zodiac gives definite characteristics. One can even tell the person's birthday just by looking at him. Isn't that right, Sergeant? Well, uh, I guess you could, maybe. Now you, Inspector, are stubborn, so I know you were born in a fixed sign. You have the thick bill and stocky neck of a bull. I'm an officer, Miss Meng, and I don't like to be called a bull or a cop. Oh, I don't mean it that way at all. The bull is the symbol of the sign of Taurus. So I know you were born between April 20th and May 20th. Well, you're right about that anyway. I'd say you were once quite an athlete, too. A wrestler, perhaps. And you probably have a good voice. You see, the sign of Taurus rules the throat, and it's a sign of many bankers. One born in May usually knows the value of money and how to hold on to it. You've got something there. I don't know anything more about Mr. Corey's death than what I've told you. But I might help you solve the case. How? Oh. Let me stay here when you examine suspects. Find out when they were born, and I could help you a lot. And what a fun razzing I'd get from the newspapers. No, you could simply tell them you brought me here because Mr. Corey was an oriental importer, and I might know. I still think that you know a great deal more about this case than you've admitted. Sure, let's hold it, Chief. Does that mean I'm under arrest? You can call it anything you like, but you'll have to stay right here until we see what develops. Oh, excuse me, Inspector, but I've got some marvelous stuff on the Corey case. Oh, this promises to be quite the best murder case we've had in months. Yes, Doc. Oh, Kelly, go out and get a line on Corey's man and see who else they brought in. Right. Oh, well, this is Miss Ming, Doc. Uh, she's going to help us on the Oriental angle. Dr. Merton's the head of our crime laboratory. What day were you born, Doctor? Huh? Oh, uh, Miss uh, Ming is sort of interested in birthdays. She oh. collects them and, you know. Well, then you tell her I was born January 9th. But look at this. This photograph was taken from the entrance hall. Now, the body was here. A woman's blood-stained handkerchief, initialed K, there. Fingerprints of several people, including at least two women. Here, there, and all over the place. Hmm. Now... Corey had a most interesting collection of antiques. But this brace of pistols is all that interests us. And that, I believe, is the one used to kill him. And here, here's something else. Ah. These hairs. 
I got from beneath Corey's fingernails. And I'm sure they belong to a dark-haired man who struggled with him just before the fatal shot was fired. Doc, that's great. If I had another man like you, I could lay off half the force. Thank you, Inspector. Thank you. And now, I'll take this back to the lab. Why don't you want the other one? No. That was in the case without a fingerprint on it. Wiped clean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> a strange character, isn't he? He seemed to enjoy the grizzly objects he found. Well, he's a mighty capable man. And a Capricorn, too. They're so often interested in research and scientific work. You know, my wife was born in January on the uh, 26th. But she's not at all like Doc Merton. Naturally not. The sun goes into Aquarius the latter part of January. But tell me, is it uh, bad to be an Aquarius? It was a sign that was wished on me. And it's a fixed sign like yours, Taurus. I imagine when you and your wife have an argument, it takes a long time to determine the winner. Oh, you're telling me. She's rather bizarre and likes extreme styles. And she can always tell the other fellow what to do. Say, she does it that. But why are you telling me all these things if they're your own weaknesses? Don't you realize I'm trying to convert you to astrology? Oh, here, I have a cigarette. No, thank you. Yeah? Chief, I've got shields out here. All right, bring them in. Miss Ming. You know this man? Certainly. He was Mr. Corey's valet. I met him on the ship. Of course she knows him. Did you hear her say that Corey was going to get rubbed out? I heard her make the prediction you saw in the morning paper. I talked to you about your own horoscope. Yes, miss, you did. Then maybe you can help us hang the wrap on it. Sergeant. Suppose we handle this in the regular way. Sit down, Mr. Shields. How long were you with Mr. Corey? Six years, and he had no love for him either. Sergeant, please. I disliked him, sir, but after all, he was my employer. He was very eccentric. Eccentric? Yes, especially about his gun collection. I wasn't allowed even, even to dust the case, and certainly never to handle the weapons. But he always insisted that his friends inspect each new one and listen to its history. Just a minute. Mr. Shields, can you explain why there were so many fingerprints on this other gun and none at all on this one? I, I couldn't say, sir. Tell him about last night. He says that Corey sent him to a movie at 9.30. Pretty late for a show. I imagine he wanted to be alone with his fiancée. Oh, he was engaged? Uh, yes, sir, to a Miss Kane. Not Doris Kane. I believe that is the name. Do you know her? We were classmates at school. What happened when you come home from the show? Well, nothing, sir. Except that when I returned about 11.30, I thought I heard voices in the living room, so I retired. You didn't hear anything unusual after that? No, sir. But when I opened the living room doors this morning, I was surprised to find the lights still on. I switched them off and glanced around, then noticed something beside the desk. I started towards it, then stopped with a sudden shock at what I saw. It was Mr. Corey's body. He was lying on his back. I knelt down and felt his pulse. He was dead. A revolver was clutched in his hand. Then, without disturbing anything else, I immediately phoned the police. You heard no shots during the night? I wasn't awakened. Oh, Seth, just like a baby, huh? Mr. Shields, look at this photograph. You slept in there. Will you please tell me how it's possible for anyone to have entered the apartment without your knowing it? Is Inspector Gregg in? What do you want to see him about? I was told he was in charge of the Corey case. He is, but he's busy at the moment. Uh, sign your name and I'll find out when he can see you. Is that necessary? Regular routine. Just wait over there. You still insist that you never handled any of Mr. Corey's firearms? It's against his orders. And I know practically nothing about them. That's all. Except the details, which means the other boys want to meet you. I'm ready, sir. Goodbye, miss. Oh, miss, perhaps from what you know of my birthday, you could tell the inspector that I've spoken the truth. I can tell him I don't think you're the deliberate killer type. Thank you, miss. Come on. 
Gino. Miss Kane. Isn't it dreadful? It is indeed, Miss, but don't worry. Come on. Send this gentleman up to the mugging room. He says he's going to give us some of the details. What's she doing here? Wants to see the inspector. Miss Kane is here. Right. Take her in. Come on, sister. The inspector's waiting. May Lee. Why, Doris, what are you doing here? I'll explain later. This is Miss Kane, Inspector Gregg. How do you do? How do you do? I want you to sit down, please. Thank you. I found her waiting, Chief. I guess she intends to come clean. Yeah, is that what you came here for? I don't quite understand. But I thought that you'd learn about my visit to Mr. Corey's apartment last evening. And I want to ask you to please keep my name out of the papers. I'm afraid that's impossible, Miss Kane. After all, the newspaper's very hot on this case, and we've got to get at the truth, no matter who it hurts. But what else is there to be learned? It's a plain case of suicide, after all. Oh, you think we were so dumb we wouldn't find out he was murdered? Murdered? Is this true, Maylie? I'm afraid so, dear. But who? I think you'd better tell us everything you know. I don't know anything. Don't say that, Doris. We all know from Shields that you were engaged with Mr. Corey. Well, I... I was quite surprised, I admit. I met Mr. Corey on the boat, and he's hardly the sort... Just a minute. Were you engaged to him or not? I, I suppose I was, in a way. We also know, Miss Kane, that Corey sent Shields from the apartment last night in order to be alone with you. I wouldn't know that. I wasn't there then. Just take a good look at that. Ain't that the way things were when you left? No. Miss Kane, tell us what occurred after you arrived at the apartment. Well, I... Mr. Corey met me and, and told me something about his trip and how anxious he was to get back. The man's thumbprint overlaps the woman's, but hers is on there, all right. You see this island, that broken ridge, and the core? Well, the fingerprints on the pen match the island, the ridge, and the core. They're Doris Kane's. And then the Kane girl was the last one to handle the gun before it was put into Corey's hand. That's exactly how it looks to me. Any luck? Yeah. The spots of blood, all right. That's definite. Well, then that just about dumps the murder right in Doris Kane's lap. <laughs> but you admit that you quarreled. Yes, when he said he didn't intend to marry me, but... So that's it. You're going to plead self-defense. I'm not going to plead anything. I don't have to. I didn't kill him, I tell you. I've got everything, Chief. I got Doris Kane's prints from a pin, and they check with those on the gun. You see, Miss Kane, we're going to find out everything, so you might just as well tell us now. But I swear I didn't do it. Then explain this. It has your initials on it, and the laboratory reports those stains of blood. That's not mine. They smell the same to me, and they will to a jury, too. I'll bet my shield. Well, you'll have to excuse me. I've got some more facts of my own to work on. You've got to tell the truth, Doris. Don't you realize you're creating suspicion? How did your fingerprints get on that gun? All right, I'll tell everything. Mr. Corey showed me two old guns shortly after I arrived at his apartment last evening. He'd evidently been drinking heavily. He made me look at the guns, although he knew I had no interest in them. He said he had bought the guns to kill himself if I refused him. But he couldn't marry me, he explained. I wouldn't listen to him further. I went to get my furs, and when he realized I was going to leave, he became furious. He followed me, and then, just as he seized me, you were interrupted. Well, who was it? I... I can't tell you. Sure you can't, because you killed him yourself. No, I didn't. No, she didn't do it. How do you know? Because I know Doris, and I read a horoscope years ago. That proves nothing. Don't you understand? It does. Doris was born in August under the sign of Leo. She's typical of that sign. Proud, perhaps too self-centered, but courageous enough not to lie about anything. Oh, I suppose nobody born in August ever killed anyone. Sergeant. Her planets were all well-placed, bringing out the best side of that sign, the generous characteristics. And if she was ever deceitful, it was to protect someone else. Miss Kane, who are you covering up? But I tell you, she's my sister, and I have to see her. And I'm telling you, she's talking to the inspector. Then I'll see the inspector, too. After all, she came here of her own free will, and there isn't any charge against her. No, not yet. What do you mean by that? Perhaps I can help you. I came here to see my sister, Miss Kane. Pardon me. Well, there's no reason why he shouldn't. Just wait here a minute. I'll speak to the inspector myself. Sergeant, have him sign the register, please. Sign here. Miss Kane, was it Corey's valet who interrupted? No. Tell them, Doris. Don't you see you're making things worse? Who was it? 
I have nothing to say. Oh, Miss Kane's brother is waiting to see her. Hmm? Your brother? Uh, yes, uh, he was abroad while we were at school. He's an engineer. May I see him, please? After I see him. Well, Sergeant, uh, take Miss Kane in there, please. When her brother comes in, will you ask him his birthday? I'm afraid that wouldn't help, Miss Wayne. This case is becoming entirely too complicated to waste time on astrology. <laughs> the only thing that'll crack this case is science. Now, I know that this brother is the man who fought with Corey last night because his hair is identical with what I found beneath Corey's fingernails. Perhaps that explains her refusal to talk. Send in Miss Kane's brother. Say, Doc, you didn't happen to find any letters signed by a man named Gow, did no. you? No. They might be in the safe, though. Mm. It had been tampered with. The combination was jammed, but I sent an expert out to open it. There were fingerprints all over it, too. I must go and check on them now. Where's my sister, Miss Kane? Just a minute. I want to talk to you. You haven't any right to... You're a little hot-headed, aren't you? Pardon me, Inspector. Were you born in April? What's that got to do with it? I'm an old friend of Doris's, and I'm trying to help her by working out an astrological chart. Oh, I see. Well, I was born right here in the city, April the 10th, 1912. What hour? I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder who you really are. Haven't I seen your pictures in the paper? You may have. Mr. Kane, we want some information, and I'd advise you to tell the truth. After all, homicide... Homicide? Is... Don't give us that. Corey was killed, and you know all about it. I don't know anything about it. I've got it. He's a member of that pistol team that beat us out for the state championship. Well, what of it? Nothing, pal. Only Corey was drilled right between the eyes. Smack in the center of the forehead. A perfect bullseye. Mr. Kane, have you an answer to that? Well, I admit I did go up to Corey's last night. I found my sister had gone up there, and I... It's much better if you tell the entire truth. Well, what's that? I know Doris's horoscope, and he's not her brother. Are you sure? Positive. In astrology, the third house of the horoscope governs brothers and sisters. The third house afflictions in both their charts denies such relationship. That don't make sense to me. How about it, buddy? She's right. We're no relation. Well, I'm a mug. If I ain't beginning to believe there's something to this star stuff after all. This gentleman... My name's Lawrence Camp. Mr. Camp is in Aries, with Mars on the ascendant, which gives him the fiery nature. Born under the fire sign gives him a certain affinity to Leo, and Doris Kane is a Leo. Are you engaged to Doris? I was until she met Corey. So you pretended to be a brother to avoid the accusation of a love murder for the killing. But I didn't kill him. I only beat him up. That's another Aries trait, a quick temper. You'd rather use your fist than a gun. But he's a crack shot just the same. I ain't forgetting that. Now, come clean. Just what did happen? Well, I found Doris struggling with Corey. He stepped back when he saw me and reached for a gun. I let him hit him on the jaw. Then he came for me again, and he got his hands in my hair, and I had to slug him from before he'd let loose. After that, I sent Doris into the hall. Then I told him what I thought. After I got through telling him off, Doris and I left. What time is that? About 10 o'clock, I think. Yeah, it all fits together like a jigsaw, but it's too pat. I figure Corey got the best of the scrap and the girl shot him. Inspector, I just got the autopsy report. Uh, just a minute. Uh, take him inside. All right, Doc. That's a bullet. Fired from the gun that killed him. He was killed after 10.30 and not later than 11.30. How come? Well, if you're interested, I can tell you that he'd eaten oysters, a steak, and some champagne. He sure vet himself well for the last trip. You're sure about the time? Oh, I've looked into too many stomachs to be fooled. They're just like clocks to me. Then young Camp lied about leaving there at 10. Yeah, and the valet, too. He said he heard voices after he got back from the picture. Oh, yes, and he was a drug addict of long standing, too. That's probably why he was able to stand up under the beating. Yeah, but that leaves it just where it was, a toss-up between the boy and the girl. Well, you can't cheat science. I'm not through yet. But I, I just can't feel sorry about Corey's death. Oh, who does? It was good riddance. Larry, I'm scared. Don't lose your nerve, honey. Larry, you've got to tell me. When you sent me into the hall, I heard a shot. Don't mention that here. Maylee. Bailey, you've got to tell me. Now, oh, what's your worry? To... You arrange for bail, I'll have him sprung in an hour. Hello, everybody. I'm Peter Finley, attorney at law. I hear someone's implicated in the Corey case and might want legal advice. No one here is implicated in anything. Uh-uh, purely a technical term, sir. What is the legal advice? My fees are most reasonable. What do you do with them? Bet on the races? Well, I 
people do place a bet now and then, when not busy in court. <laughs> How'd you know? By looking at you. Born in December, weren't you? Yeah, a week before Christmas. That makes you a Sagittarian. I don't quite follow you. I'm a native son and a member of the local bar. I mean, you come under the sign of Sagittarius. The centaur, half man and half horse. What is she, a psychopathic case? No, I'm an astrologer. I'd say, aside from being an attorney, you're quite a promoter, too. Well, I do promote a little business now and then, but just in my client's interest. Do so you like pets, dogs, and horses? Well, I got a couple of hunting dogs, but ponies really get my dough. <laughs> well, you aren't going to get any of our dough, so you might as well blow. Oh, all right, have it your way. Here's my card, in case you change your mind. My office is right across the street. I'm dynamite. Why'd you waste your time on that trick, lawyer? I'm trying to convince you that astrology really works. You did that when you discovered that Doris and I weren't sister and brother. But I can't find the answer to Corey's death unless I know the actual hour he was killed. I told you what I knew. But not all you know. I told you that when Doris and I left the apartment at 10 o'clock, Corey was still alive. Look, Sergeant, I've got something important. It's about the Corey case. I was with that guy last night. And I was with the King of Spain. Give it to the newspapers. They'll believe anything. No, you don't understand. I was up in his apartment. Yeah? What time? From a quarter of twelve to five after. Now I know why they call you the juggler. Your brain bounces. If you was with Corey last night at twelve, you was hobnobbing with a ghost. Corey was dead before 11.30. Hiya, Doc. Anything new? Plenty new and important, too. Yeah? Shields, what happened? What'd they do to you? Nothing much, miss. They just asked me a few questions. Now, there's really nothing to worry about. I've arranged everything. I... I'm sorry you won't give me the chance to help you, but I'll keep trying anyhow. Thank you, Maylee. It's good to feel I have one friend, at least. But your mother? Uh, my mother's already terribly upset about Mr. Corey's death. She mustn't have anything else to worry about now. I see. <coughs> Why, she? you seem a bit nervous. No, miss, it's not that. I was gassed in the war, miss. You should be more careful. You Virgo people have Neptune in your sun sign now. Perfectly natural mistake, of course. The fingerprints on the handle of the other gun made us think that was the one used to kill him. You mean it wasn't a Chinese pistol? The bullet recovered at the autopsy was of a different caliber. Say, this has been fired too. Then both of them were fired. And Corey was shot from a distance of at least 15 feet. What does that sound like? A duel. Well, perhaps. But who is his opponent? Shields left there about 9.30, the girl and the boy about 10. The autopsy proves he was killed between 10.30 and 11.30. If the time element was narrowed down that closely, a horoscope on those hours would prove interesting. I'll set up a chart for the approximate time of the crime. It may give a clue to the motive. I'm sorry, I can't stay for the seance. Sergeant, bring in the girl. Come on, sister. Where are you taking us? We're going to have a little talk. Come on. Sit down, won't you? No, thanks. Miss Kane, we aren't at all satisfied that you've told us everything that took place after you reached the apartment. I've told you everything of importance. I'm afraid that isn't so, Doris. You neglected to mention a shot. What time? I'd say about 10 o'clock. Really don't. And a shot was fired. Yes. And you were trying to protect the boy. I think the boy was secondary. Doris went to Mr. Corey's apartment because of some condition at home. I'd say something concerning her mother. What's your mother got to do with this? Won't you tell us, Doris, please? I'm trying to help you. I guess I might as well now. You're right, Maylee. It was because of Mother I went to Corey's apartment. Miss Kane, suppose you start at the beginning and tell us how you met Corey in the first place. Mother introduced me to him. I never liked him, but she urged me to be pleasant. Even suggested that I marry him. Somehow I sensed that she was afraid. You'd learn why, didn't you? I finally made Mother tell me. He had some letters that she'd written to him years ago, and he was blackmailing her. Not for money, but for me. Well, why didn't you go to the authorities? Well, I, I thought I could handle it myself. Get them out of the safe and destroy them. Shields was always sympathetic. He was the one that told Larry where I was last night. Then Larry killed Corey. No. He said he didn't, and I believe him. Nevertheless, I want to talk to that young man again. Sergeant, bring him in here. All right, Camp. 
Miss Candace admitted that she heard a shot fired last night. She did, but I didn't fire it. Why didn't you tell us that before? Because you'd have sworn it was a shot that killed Corey, and it wasn't. You'd better tell them exactly what happened. All right. I told Corey if he ever bothered Doris again, I'd beat him up. Well, he seemed to take it calmly enough. Then I picked up my hat, and I gave him a last word of warning. And I was just turning to go, when I heard him open a drawer. He grabbed a gun, fired the last. The bullet must have gone out an open window. Then I wrenched the gun away, backed out slowly, and kept him covered all the time. I think we'll have to book him. But you can't. He's innocent, I tell you. We're playing safe. We're booking you, too, sister. And tell Shields to wait. I may want to question him again. I think you're making a mistake, Inspector. They're both innocent. I know Doris is. Well, perhaps you're right. The time element's in their favor anyway. But there's still a lot to be explained. You made arrest in the Corey case? We're holding several people, that's all. And one of them's Doris Kane daughter of one of the oldest families in the city. What a story this will make. I don't think I'd print it, however. Why not? Who are you? Uh, never mind who she is. Miss Kane is innocent, and I'm going to prove it. Astrology will clear up certain aspects. Miss Ming, please. Say, you're the one who predicted Corey's death on the boat. Yes. And the inspector got you here to help. If you mention this department in connection with astrology, you'll never get another story out of me. I get you. Say, if you can really predict such things, I'd like to know a few things myself. You'll have to tell me when you were born. June 18th, 1910, in Chicago. Then your son was in the sign of Gemini. That's not so bad for a newspaper man. I bet you tell that to all the boys. Gemini rules the lungs. Did you have pneumonia last fall when Saturn squared your son? I don't know about Saturn, but I sure had it. Got it at a football game. And Gemini is a double-bodied sign. Most Gemini people have dual or double experiences. You don't mean I'm going to have pneumonia again. Well, you've been married twice. She's right. And here's something else. Gemini is the sign of the twins. Twins? It doesn't always happen, but in your case, I'd say twin girls. Are you kidding? My wife's in the hospital now. Why, you... <laughs> this is the stuff out of Corey's safe. Did you find any letters there from a man named Frederick Gow? Yeah, but they're on the up and up. Any from Mrs. Kane? Mm, and how? Then that ties up the case. Corey was in the blackmail racket and the kids knocked him off. All right, Sergeant, let's see the stuff. These are the Kane letters. These are Gow's. Dear Mr. Corey, can report that I have at last made arrangements for a large consignment of finer Ceylon zircons. It was difficult, but succeeded without being detected by our competitors. I will now shift the lot to you. Although I proceeded differently from our plan, I succeeded. Sincerely, Frederick Cow. These look like ordinary business letters to me. We better have Merton test them anyway. There might be something else in Trick Inc. All right, then. Yeah, Mr. Gow is here. Yes, sir. This man, Gao, is a countryman of yours. Do you know anything about him? I know him slightly. We live in the same block. Well, I have a hunch that he's a phony. And if there's anything in this star stuff of yours, now's your chance to prove it. Send Gao in. The inspector will see you, Mr. Gao. Uh, just a moment. You register, please? Yes. Ah, Miss Ming. Good afternoon, Mr. Gow. I understand you predicted the death of my associate, Mr. Corey. His death was most unfortunate. But you are to be congratulated upon your astuteness. Thank you. Have a smoke? You would do well to consider astrology yourself, Inspector, as an aid to crime detection. In China, it has been officially recognized for centuries. You would be amazed at what can be foretold. Unfortunately, I am not a student of the subject. I'd like to set up your chart, Mr. Gow, if you'd care to give me your birth time. Gladly. I was born here in San Francisco on November 1st, 1901, at exactly noon, I'm told. Quite a fortunate hour. Your son would be in the mid-heaven, a splendid place for professional success. I have not done so badly. And now, Inspector, I understand you have the letters from Mr. Corey's safe. Oh, yes, we got them. Then I will take them with me. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry, you can't take them yet. 
Uh, we first must get a release from Mr. Corey's attorney. Ah, of course. I should have known. I shall see Mr. Fields and return with his approval. Uh, Mr. Gow, would you mind using that door, please? Yes. Mr. Gow, I wouldn't have taken you for Scorpio. I would have said you were Sagittarian. I gave you the correct date. Why, Maddox? Mr. Corey, I thought I read that you'd been killed. It's right here in the paper. I don't wonder you were startled. You confused me with my brother. I admit the resemblance is, or was, quite striking. I've just been speaking to Inspector Gregg about his death. I've been trying all day to tell them, too, what I knew, but they wouldn't listen. Oh, you haven't told them, then. That's very fortunate. Come along with me, we'll talk it over. I still don't know how to figure that fellow go. He's a smart guy, all right. Just saw how he handled my cigarette case. Uh, yeah. He also lied about his birth date. Well, how do you know? You didn't even make one of your maps. I didn't have to. The date he gave me, November 1st, would have made him a Scorpio. And he's no more Scorpio than you are. What's a Scorpion look like? Heavy set and rather short, usually. Quite prominent nose, bushy eyebrows, and dark curly hair. I sure don't describe Gal. He didn't act like one, either. Scorpios are generally cruel, a bit sarcastic, and even bitter. Gal reminded me of that lawyer, Finley. Finley is a Sagittarian, born between November 20th and December 20th. An instinctive gambler. Only Gao is playing for higher stakes. Ah, you can't convict a man just on astrology. Not the way the courts look upon it today. That's astrology's fault. No, it's the fault of the thousands of fakers who make a racket of it without really knowing anything about it. Don't you admit I've told you things you wouldn't have known otherwise? Nothing I couldn't have found out. As it happens, Inspector, in this case, we have representatives of almost every sign of the Zodiac. To begin with, I've told you Mr. Camp is in Aries. You had a good look at him. I also knew that you, Inspector, were born between April 20th and May 20th. A stolid, methodical Torian, the sort who'd do just what you're doing now, without letting anything swerve you from your purpose. That's the only way to accomplish things. But people born between May 20th and June 20th, Gemini, act differently. Look at that reporter we were talking to. He's always trying to be in two places at the same time, literally racing around like Mercury, the ruler of his sign. That doesn't tell us who the killer is. Maybe I can do that, too. I've told you about Doris Kane and Leo, always thinking of others more than herself, yet proud and overbearing, a difficult person to get to know well. Shields you also know, a Virgo, willing and able to serve, yet extremely critical and inclined to brood over wrongs. What did you say I was? Pisces, February 20th to March 20th, the sign of the fish. You mean a red herring. Anyhow, they'd certainly rather drift with the current than exert themselves against it. That's the sergeant. Uh... Now take Dr. Merton. He represents Capricorn. And as it's a sign opposed to cancer, its characteristics are entirely different. It is ruled by Saturn, a heavy, somber influence. So they're usually very serious. Too serious for their own good, in fact. Your wife and I are Aquarian. January 20th to February 20th. Yes, you told me. And I'm going to tell her what you said about her being a reformer. Say, what's all this getting us? Let me in on it. Here is Corey's own chart, which I set up on the boat. I predicted Corey's death. He was a liver September 20th to October 20th, with Saturn exactly squaring his sun last evening. But Mars, the planet of violence, also played the large part of what happened. Ah, it wasn't Mars. It was a woman bounced something off of his head. That's not what I mean. Corey was in an ugly, violent mood himself. Well, that's in accord with all the testimony we've heard, at least. That's the point I'm making. That's why this chart is the key to the situation. What? Corey was killed by someone acting in self-defense. Before this case is solved, there will be two other deaths. You ain't any too cheerful. I'm not trying to be cheerful. Gao is the most important link in this chain. If I only had his actual birth time, it would give us the answer. Well, how? Because in Corey's chart, his house of partnership shows a very peculiar and sinister influence. And Gao was his partner. Let's have another look at these letters. I guess we'd better send them to Doc Merton. I don't see anything wrong. It's a code, Inspector. Hmm? It reads like Chinese writing from the top down. The first word of every line. Last consignment was detected. 
ship differently. 200 Indian hemp arrives next week. Don and Corey were in the dope wreck. That's why he wanted them letters. Just wait till he comes back for them. He won't come back. After you so obviously wanted his fingerprints? Well, then we'll bring him back. You said you know where he lives. A half block beyond me. 1216 Bay Street. Inspector Gregg speaking. This is Crenshaw calling from Sixth and Pebble. Somebody just tossed a guy out of a speeding car. He's dead. Do you get the number of the car? Oh, that's too bad. Anybody know the victim? Oh, sure. He's a two-time loser. You know, juggler barrels. Well, I just had him in here. Sure no one saw the car? Well, you better check carefully. This may be a mob rub out to stop him from talking. When did Barrows leave here? I didn't even know he was gone. Well, I saw Gal meet a man he called Barrows out in the hall. Gal? But we weren't talking to Barrows about the Corey case. I don't get it either. Barrows did say he saw Corey last night, but I just thought he was goofy. Why didn't you tell me? Because he said he saw Corey at a quarter to 12, and we know he was dead then. Where was he found, Inspector? At Sixth and Pebble. Then it was Gal. Gal don't live on Sixth. That's on the way to Chinatown. That's right. You get the car ready. You come along, Miss Ming. Send two squad cars to 1216 Bay Street and send out a general broadcast to pick up Frederick Gow. I still can't get the hookup between Gow and Barrows. You said Barrows was a safe cracker, didn't you? One of the best. Then if I want to steal some letters from a safe, I'd hire someone like Barrows to get them. Why, that's it, of course. Gow hired Barrows, then had to kill Corey when he walked in on them. Then why would Barrows be so willing to admit that he seen Corey last night? Why, Barrows thought Gow was Corey. And most likely, that's who Gow said he was when he hired him. Miss Ming, I'll have to add you to my staff. It still ain't clear to me. They found this in the back of Barrel's neck, Chief. Looks like a nail file to me. Why, it's a sliver of jade. In China, they use it in an air gun. And Gao knows all about Chinese weapons. That cane he carried. The chart said two other deaths. Looks like this is number one. Who's the other? Step on it, Bob. Wait a minute, where's Gao? No savvy, no savvy. He no savvy, you talk to him. Gao says I came out. He says he hasn't seen him since he left the house this morning. Well, we won't believe him till we look. We start upstairs and work down. And it's Ming. We better wait in there. Uh, hide the nigger phone down. There's someone in there. Come on. What a lovely Kuan Yin. It must have been very expensive. This guy's doing all right. Look, Inspector, it's a picture of his mother to the son of our house on his 20th birthday. Now that I have his birthday, I can set up a chart and really tell you something. Go to it. Inspector Gray! What was that, Inspector? They found something. You stay here, Miss Wing. You wish to know, Miss Ming? Mr. 
to go. It really doesn't matter what you've learned. Come with me and be quick. The jade gun. Yes, and a gun that is silent. Hurry. <laughs> You were a little on the jittery side, Sergeant. I wasn't even nervous until you saw a guy go in there. Well, get in if you have to break it down. Okay. <laughs> Miss Ming. Miss Ming! Kelly! Kelly, come down here! You stay here. Come on. Ming is gone. Now, how did she get out of here? I've got the place covered. I told you the whole place has honeycombed. I've got my shield. Boys, start examining these panels. trying to stop him. How'd you know about this passage? I came up the fire escape in time to see him go into the upstairs entrance. I followed. You killed him? Yes. I'd given him my savings to invest. When I found he was crooked, I... But Miss Ming knows I only fired in self-defense. Yes, he did, Inspector. All right, bring him along. You sure call your shots, Miss Ming. From now on, I'll believe everything the stars say. They were twin girls, just like you said. Congratulations. All right, boys. Go tell your readers the Corey case is solved. It isn't, Sergeant. What? Who was the killer of Corey? Gao, of course. No, you're wrong. You know that Gao carried a Chinese air gun while Corey was killed by an expert marksman. Then it was that camp boy, like I thought. It was a man who said he knew nothing about firearms, yet admitted he was gassed in the war. Just think how Gao was shot. Right between the eyes, like Corey. You're right, Miss Ming. I did kill Mr. Corey just as I killed Gao. You see, sir, when I returned from the movies, Gao and Barrows were working on the safe. Miss Ming suspected that. They ran away. Then Mr. Corey came in, mistook me for the burglar and fired. I fired back and killed him. Wow, what a story. Astrologer solves murder. Stars convict killer. Come on, honey. You know, Inspector, I'm quite relieved to know I'm no longer a suspect. Oh, nonsense. I never really suspected you. Yet your birth sign, Taurus, makes you stubborn and hard to convince. Yeah, Jim, you remember the bull. <laughs> Careful, Sergeant. Remember, you come under the sign of the fish, Pisces. <laughs> There's an old Chinese proverb. The fisherman does not bait his hook to feed the fish. I get it. They bait their hooks to catch the fish. Mm -hmm. 